Hi guys. So I've never read the book of Mark. This will be my first time reading it. Um, I know of, I have a couple of scriptures, like one or two highlighted from cross references of the Bible, but actually reading the book of Mark, I've never done it. And it's been in my heart recently to do it with you guys. So that's what we're going to do. Um, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to read, study, highlight, take notes, define some things, um, whatever I don't understand. Of course, I got my phone right here to do some dictionary def definitions and, um, yeah, that's what we're going to do. So God, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for, um, revealing yourself in scripture, interpreting your words so that I can understand and hear your voice and listen to your spirit, be sensitive to the spirit. God, I thank you that this message or your words, your parables, your proclamation within this Bible gives us comfort in our time of discomfort. Yeah. Well, we're going to jump right in. This is heavy. I feel heavy. Okay. We're going to jump right in. The gospel according to Mark. So we're in the very beginning. Number one, chapter one. Mm -hmm. Oh, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of God, as it is written in the prophets. Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. The voice of the one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Then all the land of Judah and those from Jerusalem went out to him and were all baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a letter belt around his wrist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, there comes one, the one is capitalized, which we're talking about God or Jesus when the one is capitalized. There comes one after me who is mightier than I, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to stoop down and loose. I indeed baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Wow. It came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan and immediately coming up from the water he saw the heavens parting and the spirit descending upon him like a dove then a voice came from heaven you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased Immediately, the spirit drove him into the wilderness, and he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and with and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brothers, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you wait, follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Pause. Okay. I read the book of Matthew. Well, I'm reading the book of Matthew. And in the beginning it is chapter four and chapter four the same thing happens so it's it's mark saying it and matthew saying it at the same time um jesus saw them fishing and he said he was talking to simon and peter but um follow me and i will make you fishers of men fishers of men fishers of men y'all okay this is so powerful because Matthew 28 19 literally tells Matthew 28 19 28 19 
Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Baptizing them. That's powerful because in Mark, he literally, John literally said that there was somebody greater than him. John was baptizing them with water, but he said there was somebody greater than him coming behind them, coming behind him to baptize them in the Holy Spirit. In, John, in Matthew 28, 19, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's powerful. Wow. And then fishers of men, like fishers of men, reeling men in to tell them about the good news of Jesus Christ. Wow. That's amazing. Okay, we're going to keep going. We're on chapter 1, verse 19. Mark. When he had gone a little further from there, he saw James, the son of Zabedee, and John, his brother, <clears throat> who also were in the boat, met, meting their nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father, Zabedee, in the boat with the hired servants and went after him. Then they went into Capernaum and immediately on the sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught and they were astonished at his teaching for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes wow he taught them as the one having authority and not as the scribes which means he never fit in to his environment wow um Having authority and not as describes. Jesus did not, didn't fit in. He wasn't meant to fit in, but this just confirms that he didn't fit in from the beginning. All right. Now there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we done? What have we to do with you, <clears throat> Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. Then he were all, then they were all amazed. So they were questioned among themselves, saying, "What is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority he commands even the unclean spirits to obey him." And immediately his fame spread throughout the region of Galilee. I want to know what convulsed me. <clears throat> it says, "I'm going back up, chapter twenty-six, and when he." And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, what does convulse mean? Let's look up what that means. Define convulsed. Convulsed means of a person suffer violent involuntary contradiction of the muscles producing con contortion of the body or limbs throw a country into violent social political i think it's the first one throw a country into no okay of emotion laughter or physical stimulus cause someone to make sudden violent uncontrollable movements mm. cause someone to make sudden violent uncontrollable movements and we and when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. Violent, uncontrollable movements. I need to put that up here. Convulsed. Violent. Slash uncontrollable. Okay. All right. Chapter 29. Now, as soon as they had come out of the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. 
But Simon's wife, Simon's wife's mother lay sick with a fever and they told him about her at once. First of all, Simon is Peter. And I know that because of Matthew. Wait, I don't want to lose it. I know that because of Matthew. When I just Matthew 3. Yep. Matthew 4 18. And Jesus walking and Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brothers, Simon called Peter. Okay, so I know Simon is Peter. But at this time he had not been converted to Peter. Let me just I know this is Peter. Simon called Peter. I really want to know why was he called Peter? Maybe I need to... Well, not maybe. I know I'm going to get further in the, in the book, but... I know this is Peter. All right. Um, I'm going to start it from 29 again. Now, as soon as they came out of the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife... Simon's wife's mother lay sick with a fever, and they told him about her at once. So he came up and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she served him. He started at the gate healing. Oh my gosh. Okay. At evening, when the sun had set, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were demon possessed, and the whole city were gathered around, gathered together at the door. Then he healed many who were sick with various diseases and casted out many demons. And he did not allow the demons to speak because he knew him, because they knew him. The demons knew Jesus. Now in the, mon in the morning, ha oh my gosh. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to the solitary place to a solitary place and there he prayed and simon and those who were with him searched for him when they found him they said to him everyone is looking for you but he said to them let us go into the next town that i may preach there also because for this purpose i have come forth hmm. okay because for this purpose, I have come forth. Okay. And he was preaching in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and casting out demons. Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. Wow. Wow. He reached out with compassion. I don't know if you all know, but Jesus is literally fully man and fully God. Reaching out with compassion. Hmm. Wow. Jesus was moved. Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and said to him, I am willing be cleansed. You know, I really like the fact that in this Bible, they kept the humanity of people in the presence of Jesus, which is Lord. The man said, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And in response to that, Jesus said, I am willing, be cleansed. Okay. Okay. As soon as he came spoken, immediately the leprosy left him, and he was cleansed. And he strictly warned him and sent him away at once, and saying to him, See what you see that you say nothing to anyone, but go your way, show yourself to the priest, and offer your cleansing to those which Moses commanded as a testimony to them. Testimony. Testimony, testimony, testimony. Testimony is how people knew about. Testimonies 
or how people knew about Jesus. They didn't have no social media. It was fully word of mouth. People giving their testimonies. However, he went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the matter so that Jesus could no longer openly enter the city, but was outside of the deserted places. And they came to him from every in every direction. And again, he entered. I need to know how to pronounce this. One second. Capernia? Cap. C-A-P-E-R-N-A-U-M Pronunciation, yes. Capernaum. Capernaum. Okay. And again, he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house immediately many gathered together so that there were no longer room to receive them not even near the door and he preached a word to them then they came to him bringing a paralytic paralytic who was carried by four men who was carried by four men and when they could not come near him because of the crowd the uncovered they uncovered the roof where he was so when they had broken through they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying is that paralytic what? paralytic paralytic yeah paralytic okay paralytic was lying when jesus saw their faith he said to the paralytic son your sins are forgiving you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Hmm. But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say the paralytic, your sins are forgiving you, or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he arose, took up his bed and went out of the presence of all. <laughs> so, that all um, so that all were amazed and glorified God saying we never saw anything like this yeah i'm sure then he went out again by the sea and all the multitude came to him and he taught them as he passed by he was he saw levi the son of alphaeus sitting at the tax office and he said to him follow me so he arose and followed him now it happened as how it happened as he was dining in Levi's house that many tax collections and sinners also sat together with Jesus and his disciples for there were many and followed and they followed him and when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eating with the tax collectors and sinners they said to his disciples how is it that he eats and drinks with the tax collectors and sinners when Jesus heard it he said to them those who are well have no need for a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. <sighs> those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Wow. I don't know about y'all, but when I read the Bible, like, this is a reminder of who I serve. Okay. The disciples of John and the Pharisees were fasting. Then they came and said to him, 
Why do the disciples of John and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Hmm. The disciples of John and the Pharisees were fasting. Then they came to him. They came and said to him, Why do the disciples of John and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Then Jesus said to them, Can the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the day will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and they will fast in those days. No one sews a piece of unshrunk, unshrunk cloth on an old garment, or else the new piece pulls away from the old, and tear is made worse. And no one puts new wine into old wine skins, or else the new wine bursts with wine skins the wine is spilled and the wine skins are ruined but the new wine must be put into new wine skins okay hold on because this is a parable but um we need to understand it so basically the disciples ask why not the disciples the pharisees ask jesus why don't his disciples fast and Jesus is telling them that there's no need for them to fast because they have him with them so Jesus is with them so there's no need for them to fast hmm. but he's saying that there will come a time where Jesus won't be there and they will need to fast okay moving on Chapter 2, verse 23. Now it happened when he went through the grain fields on the Sabbath, and they went, and as they went, his disciples began to pluck the heads of grain. And the Pharisees said to him, Look, why do they do what is not lawful on the Sabbath? But he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need and hungry? He and those who with him. Wait, what? He and those with him. How he went into the house of the God and how he went into the house of God in the days of Abathar, the high priest, and ate the snowbirds, which is not lawful to eat except for the priest, and also gave some to those who were with him. And he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man and not for the and not man for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Okay, let's define Sabbath. In my current understanding, the Sabbath is um, a day of rest. And honestly, it's a lifestyle, but it's resting. So let me, let's actually define the Sabbath so I can understand what this means. Sabbath. A day of religious observation and abstinence from work kept by Jewish people from Friday evening to Saturday evening and by most Christians on Sunday. A supposed annual midnight meeting... Okay, no. Well, this is actually good to know. A supposed annual midnight meeting of witches with the devil. Hmm. That's so why we work and they work too. Basically what that's telling me. But basically it's a day of observation and abstinence from work. So a day of rest. So I was right for the day of rest. So the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. So the day of rest was made for us. We are men. Man. The day of 
all the rest wasn't made for us. And we were not made for a day of rest. Huh? I'm going to have to figure this one out. But we're going to stop here. Um, we got to chapter 2. The next Bible study will be on chapter 3. Um, I hope this was enjoyable. I definitely enjoyed it. I took a lot from this. And it's opened up my eyes to a lot. And um, I feel lighter reading this book. But there's a lot more to dive deep into and read. So, yeah.